What's good, YouTube? I'm Zero Zeus, and welcome back to another Baruto video. This is going to be my Baruto episode 143 review. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you for watching, and let's get right into the video. Um, yeah, so we had a, a little case of who did it this episode, right? I mean, it was kind of like that the whole time, but it was like really, really emphasized on this episode. Like, who really did it? What, what What's like going on? Like, is this running mystery just going? And supposedly the guys in the cell are the only that their cell was the only one open at the time that kokiri was attacked right so it could only be somebody in the cell right and so everybody has like their little idea of who they think it is i the whole time i knew who it was i knew who it was i said who it was but i could understand why everybody else thought those other guys like i, I but we, we, we're gonna explain so basically what's going on is um, they figured out that the, the, the wooden piece, the wooden panel is gone. That, that it's gone. And somebody stole it. And basically the whole castle is on lockdown and they're basically looking through everybody's stuff and stuff like that. So it's, it's sort of like a countdown until they get to their cell, right? It's going to be like, you know, they're looking through other people's stuff before they get to there. So they have time to interrogate and try to figure out what is really actually going on, right? Um, so they, it, it's just really funny because when Baruto and Mitsuki, they immediately jump into action and just tell, like, everybody, like, look, one of y'all stole the tag and w w one of you guys stole the, the wooden piece from the medical ward. So it's like... You, we're about to get to the bottom of this and nobody is not going nowhere and you, it doesn't matter if all these people in this cell are like way bigger than me <laughs> they, they just like you, you gonna tell me what's going on right and basically they, they do these little things right it is these little things that stick out like the one guy with the mohawk right like, we're gonna talk about him first it's a couple of things that he's done through these last episodes that make you think like, yeah, this, this guy might actually have something going on, right? Um, he actually has like an inside connection with the guards. He's writing these weird letters that he won't let nobody see and stuff like that. And it's like, that's suspicious. That's suspicious. That's super suspicious. So um, like you could, I could definitely see why everybody thought he was a culprit. He was the culprit. I could definitely see that. And it's like the I cannot remember the big Indian guy's name. I cannot remember his name, but I know that he don't play that. The whole time, like everybody was talking and having a conversation, he was just over there in the corner, like, "Yep, don't care what nobody's talking about." Like, I just knew it wasn't him. I felt like I just knew it wasn't him, even though you know he's like big and you know I think it, um he he had like this a little backstory right and basically. He was running a scam in the prison or he was running a scam with some prisoners and I guess he got caught or something or something like that. And he basically told on everybody else, something like that. But all I know is that they basically make him seem like he's a bad guy because like these guys are going to go break out of prison. And he told on them basically. And even though technically, I'm sorry to tell y'all, but you're not supposed to help people break out of prison. So he was kind of right for doing what he was doing, whether he was being evil about it or he was being good about it. He was kind of right about it. So, yeah. And they're like, I basically, they started like searching everybody's bunks and stuff. There's not too many places where they can hide something in the cell, right? Either it's on them or something like that. Like it's something of the sort, right? And basically, they were going through the people's stuff. And you see that dude with the mohawk. He gets real antsy when they, like, they're acting like they're about to go in his stuff. And I just think, now I know the truth. And I just think it's just because he has something in his notebook. Maybe he didn't want somebody to see or he was kind of embarrassed or something like that. But I know he was just really giving them a problem about looking through his bunk. He won't, he wasn't, like, trying to have that, right? And then, all right, it's this moment. Now, the dude with the red hair, I think his name is, like, Arai, Array, one of those and basically, they had this moment between him and a guy with a mohawk, like, they're about to fight. He threw up his dukes, he threw up his dukes, and basically, he, he was just, like, he was playing a dude. Basically, just saying, like, you all bark and no bite, and you, you can't even fight. Like, he was really, he was really, <laughs> he was really dragging my, my dude through the mud, right? And it's just, like, it, it's a certain things in the episode that stand out that show you that I feel like, 
the guy with the red hair was the culprit. He is the bad guy. I knew since I first seen him, that's the guy that you can't trust. That's the guy that was helping them the whole time. Like, this is the guy that everybody would least expect to be him, right? He seems like he's too open with them. He's too nice with them. Why is he always helping them? It's the reason behind that. And, but we're, we're, we're going to get into all that. So, as we're going through, they get to the Indian dude, right? They get to him, and they're like, yeah, we're going to basically look in his bunk, right? And I think either Bruto was fussing at the at the, the dude with the mohawk, and they were like in a little tussle type of thing. And I think... um. Kokiri, that's his name, Kokiri, I think he went up in his, um, bunk, and he was basically, like, just threw him on the ground, like, yeah, I, I didn't, I, I don't like people just going in my stuff without permission, right, and it just really seems like, I don't know, like, he didn't seem like he was a bad guy, but from, the, like, your point of view, they wanted him to seem like, oh my god, you gotta watch him, <laughs> he's keeping something secret, right, and the whole time, he just, I don't know, he's very antisocial or something, I don't know, oh, 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 and while this is going on, while this stuff in the prison is going on, you have this scene with Sarada, right? And she goes and sees Sukio, I think that's what his name is. And basically, she's talking to him like she's undercover and she's basically just acting like she's giving him an interview. Like it's a regular day, right? And then the guy just comes out of nowhere and he's like, yeah, I don't know why you're acting like you're a reporter. I'm like, what? Raggy, what? <laughs> He just, he just like, he, he knows what's going on. Like, it's somebody that's telling him something different. And I would say what I think is going on, but this is not for this video. This is for the next video. So, you know, you have to catch me there. But, um, yeah, that, I, I thought that was crazy. And sorry to, like, bagged up <laughs> a little bit. Like, she was kind of taken off guard by the fact that he knows who she is. And he might even know that she's a shinobi and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was kind of hype. But back to Baruto and Miski and Kokiri and stuff. So basically, what it all boils down to is like the guards are still coming. They're still rummaging through everybody's stuff, blase, blase, and stuff like that. And it seems like one of the themes of this episode was like, you really don't know who this person, who a person is, right? And they like really keep hinting at Kokiri, like, you really, yeah, I didn't even know he was a Mujina bandit. I didn't even know, you know, like, he's capable of these things, even though he doesn't look like it. So it's like, don't judge a book from his cover, I think. And Arai, he, he, uh, Arai, he was another one he, that you don't judge by a book's by, uh, by his cover. He was slick with his, right? So he had this moment in the episode where he was basically acting like he had a, uh, like a chocolate thing he was a chocolate addict or something he just really loved sweets right and at this time when he pulled his sheet off the bed right he took the the wooden panel and stuck it under the, the indians dude bed so it made it look like you know it, it was him and he was really quick and swift with it and it, it, like i rewatched the episode you can go back to it and you actually see the moment where he sneaks off bah, with that little look on his face like bah, and you, you could see him like you could see what he's doing so and basically, so they catch the Indian, they catch the wooden panel in the Indian dude's bed. And he's basically like, what? A what? <laughs> this can't be a thing, right? And he, he, like, just hear him out. You wouldn't think it. From his point of view, you could tell, obviously, he must have been blamed for something that he didn't do or something like that. Because the way that he's like, so you're not even going to listen to um, anything I say or anything. He was just like giving the rundown before it actually happened. Like, y'all don't want to hear what I say, what I got to say you're just gonna blame me for everything that happened so it's like it's no reason it's no, no reason like we're done talking right and if i'm not mistaken the only way they figured out that Arai was the assassin right is the fact that he knew that kokiri was a part of the magina bandits gang and nobody else knew but baruto and Baruto, kokiri and mitsuki and he tried like he was really secretive about this it's like Next thing you know, he I, I think he said, all I have to do is, and the dude, the big Indian dude, stole him, like, <laughs> in the middle of what he was doing. So, I was like, yeah, this episode was pretty hype. It wasn't that much, like, so much action, but it was kind of hype. The mysterious, the mysteriousness of the episode was hype. But, um, I'm going to end it right here. This has been my Baruto episode 143 review. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you for watching.